Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we have a new stack from iFly. It's called the iFly Success. Now this is a pretty interesting stack. First of all, as you can tell here, it's all connected via pins. As you can tell, we have the ESC connected to the flight controller via pins and then the flight controller connected to the VTX via pins. Now, the only thing that I currently don't like about this is the stack height, but you can't really do much with the stack height. It's around 20 millimeters of stack height here. So if you're gonna be purchasing this, take that into consideration. And it is a 20 by 20 uh, mounting hole setup here. Now, the ESC is pretty interesting. It's the, it's rated up to a 6S, as they're stating, and it can handle 35 amps to a 45 amp burst, so 35 amp constant current. So that's that's pretty insane. However, you need to also take something about this ESC. It is a BL Holly 32, so you'll be able to run D-Shot 1200. It does not have a current sensor, keep that in mind, and there is no ESC telemetry. So also keep that in mind if you're gonna be purchasing this. Filtration looks good for a micro setup for something like possibly 13OX, the 13X, X class would be great. Anything above that, I think you might need to add a low ESR capacitor. Now, this I could be wrong also, but it's always recommended to add low ESR capacitor. And they also do provide you with a 220 microfarad, 35 volt Rubicon low ESR capacitor, which is a huge plus here. Now, and again, if you're new to this or you just don't want to, you know, mess with the wires in such a tiny build, this is going to be a really great solution because you're getting premium components and everything is already pretty much set up for you. All you need to do is just solder your motors battery, camera, and receiver. And that's it. Everything else is connected. It's it's really nice. And they do provide you with every single wire you'll need. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wires here to see how well everything is pre-made for us here. So I'm really hoping that it just has the direct connector to... Yeah, it does actually. So this is... The, one of the wires here is going to go directly to your camera. So you don't have to solder even the camera. So that's a huge plus right there. This one would go to your... Um, receiver but i believe this is a default s bus setup here and there is an extra uh hole in the connector if you can take a closer look here so i think if you're running ibus you would just switch this white wire over there and this would output five volts so make sure your receiver takes five volts if you're fly sky or fr sky you have nothing to worry about i think uh spectrum is the only one that takes 3.3 volts so we're already basically done here all you need to do basically is just the only soldering i think you will need to do is possibly still your receiver. You might have to cut this off. Your motors and your battery terminal. And I don't think there's anything else you're going to need to solder to this. Yeah, you don't. So in that perspective, it's a huge plus. Plus you're getting, you know, the latest and greatest. Obviously, it's not an F7 flight controller, but you have every single thing you want in here. It's running an MPU 6000 gyro, F4 flight controller. You have OSD, BL Heli 32 ESCs uh, with a really good high rating. So that's a huge plus. And it's 20 by 20. And you have a 200 milliwatt VTX, which is already pre-connected with smart audio. So you don't have to come here and start pressing the buttons. So if you didn't want to use smart audio, you can always use the button, which is located right there. And it's really nice they didn't add the side press one because those are a lot weaker than, than most buttons. And also another huge addition they've added to this is an LC filter built right into the VTX. It's going to be a little bit difficult for you to see, but let's try to pop this out so you can kind of get a better idea here. So as you can tell here now, I just gotten the uh, VTX out of the stack and we can tell the IPEX port is right there. It's going to be very loose and you can always change it out to anything you want. They do provide you with a pigtail currently. And here we have the two LED statuses, which might be a little bit difficult to see since we have this uh, 3D printed part that will be covering this area in order for you not to lose your antenna and to possibly damage it by any way. And it is flexible, so you still be able to press the button through this piece here, which is protecting this and keeping the antenna down. And we do have the LED right there for current, power, and band. Now, this thing is up to, rated up to 200 milliwatts, which is really nice. And it is selectable, and it's running smart audio right out of the box while it's connected through its pin headers here. Now, if we take a look down here, this is the area where we have the filtration for the video, which is really nice addition that they've done that here. Or likely have a clean video feed. But even if you did have a clean video feed, it doesn't always mean you do have a clean system overall. And it's always recommended to add the low ESR capacitor and keep that in mind. Now, if we take a closer look at the flight controller here, and when you're taking this apart, you gotta just be a little bit careful because the rubber gaskets just, uh, just tend to fly everywhere. And if you lose them, they don't provide you with any spare. So keep that in mind here. Now, if we take a look at the flight controller, it is meant to be mounted like this. So the batteries would actually come in the back. So this would be motor one, two, three, four. And um, you can't really modify it like through wires if you wanted to. If you wanted to, for some reason, set it up like this or like this, then you are going to have to edit it in the uh, beta flight resources uh, tab. So yeah, keep that in mind. Also, as we can tell, we have the OSD here. We have the boot button. We have the status LEDs. Overall, it's a nice little 
Uh, flight controls in F4 with obviously OSD and MPU 6000 gyro. The flight controllers on the bottom, we have the gyro right there. Do we have a barometer of any sort? Nope, we don't really have anything. We do have some filtration going on for it. And those are probably the bypass capacitors. And uh, let's take a closer look at the ESC. So I'm going to continue taking this guy apart and then uh, we'll take a look at the ESC also. Alright, so now we're taking a look at the ESC. Now the ESC looks pretty good. There's nothing bad I can say about it currently and I haven't tested it. But again, if you're going to be planning on using this for an 11, over 11XX class motor, I still highly recommend you add the low ESR capacitor that is provided with it. And um, overall, the filtration looks somewhat minimal, but it's going to be doing it's going to do just fine for any type of micro here. Uh, you're going to be doing just great, especially with the LC filter built in and all over there just has some filtration here and there, as you can tell, like in the VTX. So overall, it's a really nice package, especially for someone who doesn't want to slaughter a lot. And uh, but you just need to take note of the amount of space that it's going to take because it will take roughly 20 millimeters, but you can add a little extra three, three millimeters or so. So we can say, I, I would, you know, safely say it'll take around 23 millimeters of stack height. Uh, this is what I would currently say. And then just, just to just, you know, keep that into consideration before uh, purchasing the frame uh, that you will be building this with. But the overall, you know, setup is absolutely simple. As you can tell, it's just plug and play, add the spacers. Now, I wish the spacers just slid on, but as you can tell, I have to screw them on which is kind of, uh, it just, it's because it's a very long, they're giving you metal screws here that'll go through the whole flight controller. So this kind of takes a, a while to set up actually. And as you can tell, the, the assembly is just absolutely, just really simple. Uh, but it will take some time to <laughs> assemble it here with every single thing that it's going to need. And just be careful not to lose any of these pieces because it doesn't come with any uh, extras or spares here. All right guys, so final thoughts and my overall opinion on this currently. I think it's a really great stack for a couple reasons. One, it's very easy to assemble. I mean, there's not much soldering needed here. All you need to do is just connect them like a puzzle and you're just good to go. All you have to do is basically solder your receiver and you don't even have to solder your camera. So that's really nice. They give you the wire directly. You can connect it to most of the cameras out in the market. So that's just really a huge plus. And uh, just motors and the battery pad. That's all you really have to actually solder to this. So it's really nice and you get premium components. So that's also a huge plus here that you're getting the premium components. For example, a Beale Holly 32 ESC and F4 MPU 6000 gyro and a selectable 200 milliwatt VTX, which is um, already connected via smart port. So you really don't have to do much. Now, the only things that I, do, I wish they added extra was a current sensor and possibly ESC telemetry. I think that is the only thing that it's needing here. Um, other than that, I don't have an issue with pins. Now, some people don't like pins because they say they break. But here, what they've done is they've given you a metal uh, screw to go all the way across, so you don't have, so you don't risk the um, the nylon standoffs or spacers to break, thus breaking the pins here. So this is just a metal M2 screw that's going all the way across. So your chances of breaking one of those pins is very unlikely. But again, depending on how hard you crash. But if you set this up on a micro, I, I seriously, I don't see how you can break any of these pins. But again. Yeah, some people broke them. Uh, for me, I haven't broken a pin to this day. But overall, the overall execution, the build quality, just everything about it is really nice. So if you've used this, please let us know down in the comment section. I'm very curious to hear how your experience was, and I'm sure others will want to know also. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Looks like a really nice stack. And uh, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And please check out the links down below. Those are great to support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.